Tim Wilson. Thanks a lot. Round of applause again for my friend Grant Turner there. Give it up. Yeah. Okay, that's enough. So how y'all doing? Good mood? Yeah. Well, my name's Tim Wilson. I'm originally from the entertainment capital of the world, Columbus, Georgia. Yeah. yeah. I've obviously got the worst southern accent of the night, I think. Yeah. Been in New York. And they always kid me there about that movie Deliverance, right? With a squeal like a pig, ink, ink, and all that. And I think, well, at least our fags are doing it in the woods and not on national television. Well, that's, that's something. <laughs> that is. It's good to be back down here where people understand what the hell I'm talking about. And, yeah. Went to the mall today and went to one of those Spencer novelty gift shops. You know what I'm talking about? Got all that novelty stuff you buy. It's a true story. I was eating a hot dog. Right? I walk in, the woman goes, I'm sorry, sir, but you can't eat in the store. I said, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. I didn't mean to get mustard on your fart spray over here. <laughs> hey, hey. Hey. Yeah, I want to meet the individual who came up with the idea for fart spray. You know what I'm saying? Does this guy like going to the bank for a business loan? You know, walk in, go, I got a great idea for an entrepreneurship. I can't really think of how to explain this to you here. You, here, pull my finger. <laughs> and we'll put that in a can, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, Shriners will show up. Hell, will just be a run on it. You know? <laughs> so it's good to be back home where people do that. And, uh, watching the news, I uh, saw Pope John Paul driving through one of these crowds in the Vatican in a bulletproof van. And a lot of people look at that, and they think that just goes to show what a messed up world we're in. I look at this, kind of wonder where the Pope's head's at, because if this guy's afraid to die, my ass is in trouble. Because <laughs> I'm Baptist. <laughs> and if you don't wear polyester, we ain't listening to you. That's how that is. How many Baptists got in tonight? It's a Baptist. <laughs> we'll drink up. <laughs> And yeah, don't matter what they dunk you in, long as you go under. <laughs> Unlike the Catholics, don't matter what the hell you do, as long as you tell somebody. <laughs> Have to switch over there. I drove in here. How many of y'all got GM cars here? You're proud of them, too, boy. GM cars get about 30,000 miles on them. The alternator looks at the water pump and goes, how many miles you got? Okay, let's all fall apart right now. Yeah. Yeah. I sat in a laundromat about four hours waiting on this fellow to fix my car. And how many of y'all ever see the woman in the laundromat? She's got the curlers and the hair, polyester shorts, about 19 sizes, too small, and, uh, panty lines, and you don't want to see them. You know, yeah. Dirt around the ankles, dozen kids, they're all named Sheila. Yeah. Yeah. Rough woman, you know, kind of woman that lives on food stamps, but her husband owns automatic weapons. Yeah. Go to the store, buy vine a sausage, open them up, eat the sausage, then drink the juice. Yeah. 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 Rough woman. Yeah. Kids' clothes are dirty as hell, but they live at the laundromat. Yeah. It's like they run out of quarters or something. I don't know how I got off on that, just did. Yeah. Had a thing called a distributor module. Got tore up on my carts with the points used to be in a distributor cap. Put a little chip out, put it back on, $35, you're down the road. Took me nine mechanics to figure out what it was. Which engine? It's your whole damn engine. Gonna cost you about $1,200, $1,275, about $1,295. About eighteen hundred dollars. <laughs> or you get that mechanic, it looks like it didn't get out of the sixth grade, but he talks over your head so high you don't know what he's talking about. It's like, well, we can do one or two things to it. I can pull your hose off the top of your intake manifold and create a vacuum down the top of the piston, try to grind the oil out of the top of the piston, pull your header gasket down off the top and 
unhook the electrical switch from my starter and reset up your flywheel and pull your timing chain down around the gear shifter and the transmission. Pull your exhaust manifold off, clean it out, pull the bolt out and hook the hose to it. Or, or you just change the oil. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> but I got here and I have one aunt that loves commercialized religion more than anybody in the world. She like buys those little cloths they sell, sends money, worries, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thanks in the back there, ma'am. Mm. Her favorite preacher, my favorite preacher, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Brother Jimmy Swagger, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> I want to talk to you today. The United States of America is going through one of the biggest problem eras it's ever faced in the history of this country. Our young people listening to this demonic, diabolical, secular, humanistic, heavy, heavy, hard, heavy metal, acid rock, Heavy illicit sex filled, homosexuality filled, nasty, trashy, vile, perverted, family destructing, fire breathing, hell bound, unnatural, ungospel, unbiblical, ungodly rock, hard acid, heavy metal music. I don't know. You're getting your checks. I need some money. I'm building churches. Please help me. We're going to build them in Czechoslovakia, Argentina, Canada, Guatemala, Venezuela, Costa Rica, Puerto Rica. Cold, whatever it is. Alaska, put a cold on. It'll be cold. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bolivia, Nicaragua, Rhodesia, China, Korea, Hawaii. Marietta, we're going to build it right across from the big chickens where we're going to put it. <laughs> we were in a hotel room the other day. My wife and I, it was my wife and I, we were in a hotel room the other day. <laughs> the telephone rang. I didn't really want to answer it. <laughs> oh, you laugh. Ha, 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 ha. I asked my wife, Frances, would she answer it? Jimmy, would you answer it? I didn't really want to answer it. I said, God, should I answer it? He said, Jimmy, answer it. I said, Lord, would you answer it? He says, I already know who it is. Jimmy, you answer it. I don't need to answer it. Something in my spirit told me I should answer it. I picked it up. A desperate voice came over that telephone. <laughs> it said, is this the Travel Inn Motel in New Orleans? I said, no, that's 4220422. Thank you so much. Yeah.